Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and isn't this a different and fascinating Jimi Hendrix Experience concert poster from the spring of 1969 in Toronto, Canada? Now, interestingly, this thing is entirely in green and purple inks. There's no black printing or black ink used at all, so that's unusual. Same thing with just the banner headline there, Hendrix, with an exclamation point. Everything else is left to the much smaller print down below. And you know, when you're talking about this poster, I might as well get it. Just sweep it out of the way right away and mention it. As you may very well know, this was an infamous date in Jimmy's career. On the very morning of this concert, May 3rd of 1969, Jimmy was arrested upon arriving at Toronto International Airport. He had played, by the way, in Detroit the night before. Arrested for allegedly small amounts of hashish and heroin in his luggage. But the good news is, for us rock fans, he was um, later acquitted by a jury. But man, he spent all day at the courthouse on this day. And uh, might as well get this out of the way too. Here's the unfortunate mugshot of Jimmy taken by the Toronto Police Department on that very day. And uh, that's exactly what he looked like without his stage uniform and everything. But, you know, it's an unfortunate fact. But it's really what happened on this day. So, I don't want to spend too much time on it because, you know, maybe there were trumped up charges anyway. I mean, for heaven's sake, Jimmy and his camp were told a day or two ahead of time that the police would go were going to be trying to bust them or searching them or whatever at the Toronto airport. So why in the world would anybody carry drugs? And, you know, by most accounts in the camp, Jimmy was completely flummoxed by the whole thing. So, but back to the music and the poster. This is a paper poster, measures about 17 by 25 inches, and it was art designed by Ray Bennett. Now this was apparently produced by Toronto's FM rock station, Chum FM, which, uh, you know, either sold them or handed them out at the concert, although they definitely doubled as advertising posters as well. But the tour was using a standard cardboard tour blank to also sell tickets, and in fact, here's the image from this very show. Take a look at this. Yeah, you recognize this image. And uh, by David Bird. This is Saturday, May 3rd at Maple Leaf Gardens. Check that out. And just to show you how this tour blank was being used, here's the night before in Detroit, which I've already mentioned. So there's the tour blank poster, again designed by David Bird, and that's May 2 in Detroit. So, you know, with a poster like this, sometimes the line kind of gets blurred, right, between strict advertising posters, which that tour blank I just showed you definitely is, and a combination poster that's, you know, <clears throat> printed before the show, as this surely was, and also given away in droves by the radio station, maybe the promoters, maybe sold for a buck at the show, you know, definitely produced to um, create a buzz about the show, which is marketing and advertising, absolutely. Sort of brings to mind Hendrix and the 1968 Miami Pop Fest posters, which, um, you know, they had Jimmy, one of them had Jimmy's image, one of them had, you know, the red man on a barrel, and they doubled as merchandising posters sold at the show. But, you know, the promoters really had to cover their financial butts with this thing because at the time, reportedly, Jimmy was the highest paid entertainer in the world. Wow. With the Beatles, the Stones, and Elvis all on the sidelines performing-wise. So, you know, to make sure they sold out and made their nut, two posters was a lot better than none, absolutely. Now, as for the four lines at the bottom, you know, uh, you've got this combination of this purple and green color, plus the dot pattern you see, and no black ink for sharp contrast, so it can be kind of hard to make out some of those words. So let's go ahead and zoom in for a closer look. It starts off with a radio station tie-in. Chum FM, in cooperation with Cora Promotions, presents Warner Brothers Seven Arts Recording Artists. Well, that was a short-lived name used just 1967 through 70 for Warner Brothers Records, under which, of course, reprise fell. The Jimi Hendrix Experience. And then you got some clunky punctuation. <laughs> it sort of muddies things up. It says after experience, with Noel Redding, comma, Mitch Mitchell, comma. Well, of course, that was it for the experience, <laughs> but the two support acts are looped in grammatically. Cat Mother and West Foster. Now, of course, Cat Mother and the All Night Newsboys were a frequent Jimmy support act. He produced them, and next month they would hit with their only hit record, Good Old Rock and Roll. 
Then you've got Maple Leaf Gardens, Saturday, May 3rd, 1969. Uh, maybe the year's on there because the poster designer or the radio station thought that people maybe would save this for a few years since it looks so nice. 8 p.m. Tickets on sale at all Maple Leaf outlets, A&A store, all Record Villa stores, and the Turntable Club. Uh, turntable Club, like record player. Two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half dollars. Now it's interesting, that's different information than the cardboard tour blank poster I showed you. That one has the address and phone number of Maple Leaf Gardens with mail order instructions. And this poster has none of that, but it lists the retail outlets instead. Jimi Hendrix, wow, the spring of 1969, getting ready to shed the experience and head in a new musical direction. But his fans, they weren't letting go so easily still sitting comfortably in Billboard magazine's top LPs chart at the very time of this concert was 1967's Are You Experienced and 1968's Electric Ladyland. <laughs> Great poster, really fun showing it to you today. Thanks for stopping by and I appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. See you again for something soon. Bye-bye.